We're here with Bones Highland out of VCU, uh, one of the most dynamic guards in the country this past season, conference player of the year. Uh, Bones, I appreciate you taking the time, man. Yes, sir. I appreciate you for having me. So for people watching this who maybe don't know much about your game, you know, how would you describe yourself as a player? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a, uh, honestly, <laughs> I'm a tight player, you know, go with the flow, you know, I can score the ball at will, I can shoot the ball from anywhere on the floor, you know. Uh, I'm a very good point guard as well, too, you know, I feel as though my, my passing skills are very underrated, you know, from just first first season, you know, if, if you watch a lot of uh, basketball and you watch me play my first year, you've seen a lot of me uh, playmaking, you know, I had a different role this uh, uh, upcoming year, uh, my sophomore year, so it's just, you know, so my like basically I had a different role, you know, scoring ability. So I, I would I would say my game is you know I'm a scoring guard, but I can also play point guard well, uh, point guard role very well. I mean your range is clearly like one of your best attributes, right? I mean yeah. you look how deep you are. That's well beyond NBA range. Um, where does that have you always been like just so comfortable from deep? Have you always been a shooter? Yeah, all my life honestly. You know, it's just <laughs> I've been shooting them shots. You know, from deep my whole life. So it's just like. It, it, it came so natural to me, so it was just like, you know, that was just an easy shot for me. And I shoot it so effortlessly that, you know, I've been playing this and, and I've been shooting this shot my whole life. So it was just like, you know, so easy to me. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's going to translate, you know, to the next level. And you're also a guy, if you look at the second clip, who can shoot it a little bit on the move as well off of screens. So here you're setting a back screen, then you're coming off another one? Yep. Little, little, little action, you know, to get me started, get me going, you know, early, you know. Great play call from Coach, so, uh, you know, that, that was definitely a great play. You know, we work on that action a lot in uh, practice. So when you're kind of shooting it at your best, right, in these situations, what are some of the things that you're doing well? Uh, honestly, like mechanically? Uh, you know, following through a little bit, you know. I was, I was honestly in the rhythm already, so it was more so, you know, just me just letting it go, honestly. Yeah, and I think your shot preparation here is like, Really good. Hands and feet are ready. You know, one yep. fluid motion. Um, I mean, that's clearly going to translate. And then, okay, and pick and roll. I uh, can't go under on you, right? This next clip. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, no, sir. So that is that always your first read? Like, you're just reading where the defender's going, where the on-ball yeah, oh, defender? I, I honestly think that coach was telling them, you know, to go under. And I'm like, huh? And I, just, <laughs> I, just, I just pulled it from there. I'm like, I'm going to make sure he don't go under no more. Yeah, you made him pay, and you did that throughout the course of your career. And so one guy who's done that in the NBA, if you look at this next clip, is yep. Emmanuel Quickly. Um, I think naturally just with, like, your length, uh, you know, the way he shoots the ball, even your shooting mechanics a little bit similar. Yeah. Do you see any similarities there? Yeah, I see. I definitely do see similarities there, you know, just the, uh, you know, the, how he shoots the ball, you know, uh, and, you know, just knowing when the defender's going down underneath the screen, you know, not everybody can see that before the play happens, so... Uh, you know, definitely credit to him for seeing that for sure. But I definitely see a little bit of similarities there for sure. Yeah, and he was a very accomplished guy who, you know, people maybe saw as just a just a shooter in college. Exactly. And he showed he could come in and play a little bit on the ball too, right? Yep. Most definitely. Um, yeah, so definitely a good, a good template to follow. Um, and then, yeah, he had that deep range. And then the fourth clip here, so okay. If they got to if they got to go over the screen now, right? Then then it's kind of your world, right? So, yep. what what are you looking at when they're in these drop situations? Like, what are your options as you come off? Um, uh, on this drop situation, you know, I'm I'm more so looking at how to first the the defender is, is trying to play me, you know, the one that's guarding me first, you know. Yep. But once I get him out the screen, and then I, I'm reading how the uh, the drop defender is playing, and I knew I could get my floater off, and I and I knew he was a little back, a little bit back too far, so I knew my floater was gonna work in this situation for sure. Yeah, good touch on the floater, good rhythm, nice little change of pace, and then you'll also probably have you know that pocket pass at some point too, right? Yeah, when the, when the lanes open up for sure. How much have you been studying that type of stuff? You know, like pick and roll reads and all that. Uh, honestly, I, I try to watch film almost like. Three times a week, you know, just just you know, on different reads and and, and, and how uh, they play drop coverage and, and different pocket passes, you know, and just you know, just honestly, all the different passes in the game that's that, that that's happening right now. So definitely been watching a lot of film. Yeah, most definitely, and you're gonna have a lob threat shooting around you. Um, yep, exactly. and so that's that's so you know, it, it a lot of things open up for sure. Yeah, definitely. And so we saw that floater from you, and then on this next clip too. You know, quickly another guy who's really good against these drops comes off the handoff, and you can see, yep. like, see how far back that big is, right? Exactly, yeah. And I feel as though he had the lob too, right off the bat too. 
But yep. definitely a great play for him. Good change of speed for sure. So, so as he right as he gets a three point line, he could throw that up to Nerlens. Exactly. Yes. For sure. Yeah, no question. And, and, and this is kind of NBA action, too, if you run it back, right? So he's going to sprint into a handoff, and then, you know, it's a double screen there, double drag at the top, and you got one guy popping, one guy rolling, right? Uh, for sure. Um, so, yeah, I think I think you'll fit right in, you know, to that, that style of play. And he's really good at drawing fouls, too, get into your body yeah, a little bit. Especially as a rookie, too, you know, you don't see that a lot from rookies, you know, so he definitely picked up, you know, uh, th- just the – attribute to be able to draw fouls easily so that definitely credit to him again and then one other guy too on this next clip who you remind me of a little bit um just with like your change of pace is DeJounte Murray uh have you heard yep. that before yeah you know <laughs> honestly that was my first uh comparison that I ever heard honestly you know just from the length or uh you know just everything how long our arms are you know our body frame you know and, and, and I see some uh abilities in his game that I have as well so I definitely heard that comparison before too. Yeah, and, and it's almost like quickly shooting ability with kind of his change of pace. Like he plays off those yeah. hezzies, those hang dribbles, just like you, right? Yeah, for sure. I, I heard they used to call me like a, a baby Dejounte a lot. You know, I heard that honestly when I was coming up for sure. Who else are you studying, watching, saying maybe I could play this type of role? <clears throat> uh, I've been watching a lot of, uh, you know, when John was in the playoffs. Yeah. Uh, you know. And then a lot of Trey Young too. Just the just the, his ability to make them passes, and and that those are not easy passes. And the way he's seeing it, you know, I'm starting to study a lot of that, and and that's that's like big because I, I feel as though I I thrive in that them type of situations for sure too. And just uh, you know how Chris Paul has changed the pace when he gets in, in, in inside of you know 15 feet. How calm he is, you know the phase that he's shooting. You know, I see myself doing the same exact thing. You know, so I've been definitely studying them players for sure. Yeah, those are some of the best. You know, I, I think CP too. Like I always say, he plays in slow motion. You know, he yeah, he <laughs> can't you can't speed him up. Can't speed him up. All right, the last clip here in in this section. Okay, so we talked about they go under, you got the three. They go over, you got the float, showing the yep. pocket pass a little bit, and then if you get the switch, you know, mm-hmm. the ability to kind of get to your your step back too. Um, exactly. When you have a big on an island like this, what are some of the things going through your head? Like what what are kind of some of your go tos? Yeah, so uh, honestly, it was getting late clock, so I knew they was going to want to switch. Uh, the bigs had a great screen, and honestly, I, I, I knew in my head, you see me looking at the clock, I see it's, it's winding down, so I didn't have time to bounce all the way out to have court and let their defense uh, set up. So when I bounced out, I went right back into the move. So you, between the legs, you know, a little, little step back, you know, got him all balanced and then make the shot. So, you know, just, just little things like that, I, I see me uh, thriving on the next level for sure too. Yeah, absolutely. And this is smooth. I mean, the, the through the legs move, a little change of pace, the step back. Who were your biggest influences, I guess, like growing up playing? We talked about the guys now, but like, where do you think you get some of your, the, the game that you have? It, it might sound crazy, though, because <laughs> I really never really like looked at a lot of NBA players, but like, <laughs> I used to watch hot sauce growing up. <laughs> okay. I love it. <laughs> That's why I honestly really like, you know. <laughs> As I, I honestly really never watched NBA players like that growing up. I, I was more so, you know, I grew up on street ball and stuff like that. So Hot Sauce was the, was the hottest out. You know, he had all the moves. You know, you wanted to be like Hot Sauce, his crossover, stuff like that. So honestly, it, majority of it came from Hot Sauce. So I, definitely, that, that's my guy. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not mad at you for that, man. Hot Sauce was nice. <laughs> and one mixtape tour, Hot Sauce, who uh, skipped to my Lou. Yes, yep, skip to my loop too, for sure. Play the yeah, NBA. Cool. Ray yeah. for Austin. Exactly. Um, so, yeah, no, th- you can see that you, you definitely have a lot of game off the bounce, um, for sure. And then quickly in these switch situations again, okay, he's got DeAndre Hunter on him just to show, like, I think you have this type of range too off that has he, right? Yep, exactly, yep. And then he, he not trying to, like, you know, push up on him. He keeping him on his toes, you know, and, and with that deadly range like that, that I have, it's going to keep them on their toes a lot. You know, it's going to create so much space on the floor, so. Yeah, that's that's a huge part of today's game, right? We see it with Trey. Yeah. We see it with so many guys. It's like the four-pointer. If you have that, exactly. then they got to guard you, and then you just play, yeah. right? <laughs> Definitely. And, and you can't touch anybody in today's game. And so, all right, this next one, it's not a switch, but I just want to show, your, like, your kind of hip swivel hesitations are, are really good. Um, yeah. W- take me through this move. So you come off. Uh, so I caught him, you know, off the – I thought he was going to switch, but mm-hmm. I knew, honestly, we needed a bucket. We were 
So, and I knew I, I could be that guy to, to, to get a bucket. So I knew once I hit him with a little bit of change of speed, I knew that hip movement was going to get him, and, and it got him off balance, and I got the foul call. And so as you come it, off too. It, honestly, it really was me uh, having the eyes, though, you know, letting him think that I'm about to throw it back to, you know, to the replay to number two. And I caught him, you know, and then once he – once they switched back, then it was the, the hip uh, movement came in, and then I made my move from there. Yeah, that's a great point. So as you come off, he thinks maybe you're throwing that lefty hook pass, pitch hook, back, right? Uh, most definitely. And then you just – he tries to get back in front, a little hezzy. They call the foul. Um, but that's where there are some similarities too with quickly. Like he can play off that little hezzy, then the kick out, yep. right? Exactly, yeah. To Rose. Yep, uh, smooth. And then, and then DeJounte Murray too, he's – He's probably got one of the best um, in the NBA just playing off that, right? Most definitely. And, nice badge. And so, yeah, I think I think you could be, you know, similar in, in that regard. And then, all right, so some of the clips where, you know, maybe you, you could have made a different play or just want to ask you through some stuff. So you make this shot, right, um, on this first clip here against St. Bonaventure. So you come off the handoff. You make this, mm -hmm. right, and you knock it down. Yeah. But a lot of times in the NBA, it's not going to be as much, like, catch hold iso right yep and i know that was your role at vcu right so um you had the you know they said hey bones we, we need a bucket H how do you think it'll be different in the league um like if you're in this situation oh uh, honestly i feel as though i, I could have got past the guy you know but i knew i could make that shot so but honestly uh the big being in the dunker, dunker spot you know uh number 10 being in the corner just, just creates more open lanes for me to drive, you know, just try to get a foul call or, you know, dump it off to the big, lob it up, you know, just, just different plays like that. Yeah, and, and again, this was probably a play called for you, right? Like, ISO at the top of the key, go get a bucket, you knock it yeah. down, exactly, right? But just to show you on these next couple, this is what it's probably going to look more like in the NBA, right? So, all right, quickly catches at the top of the key. I know it's yep. later clock. He's going to put it down, attack, hit, come off of it into another yep. ball screen, right? Exactly. Uh, and, a lot of actions. Yes, 100%. And, and, and I know that's a tough shot. I mean, late clock, um, float game off the off the right foot. Yeah, is, that's definitely a tough shot. <laughs> <laughs> but just to show that, like, that's the style that you're going to be playing in the NBA. You can even see this next one, right? So DeJounte hit, going to come off it. They reject yeah. it. What do you like about this? I, I really like his, his, change of, his change of pace, honestly, you know. Coming off the handoff, he didn't. He rejected the handoff because Dante played it too uh, aggressive. You know, he came back off. Now Dante's behind the play. Now he has numbers uh, against Brook Lopez, you know, Dejounte, and uh, you know his teammate. So you know his change of pace was really good, and he got the defenders, both of the defenders, in the air by the uh, fake floater in the pass. You know, and he he also had another read, uh, Lonnie Walker, filling up to the top. So you know, definitely a great play by him. Yeah, that was my next question too, right? So if they take that big away. Um, you know, what are the next level reads? Kind of the, the circle up guy and then the deep corner? Yeah, most definitely. You know, it, it'll put Middleton in a tough uh, scramble situation, you know, uh, a two-on-one -on situation, you know, so it, it, that's definitely a, a great play. And it started from uh, DeJounte. Yeah, absolutely. That's that's huge. And so just to show kind of the compare and contrast, right, that you, you know yeah. how to play out of these actions. So here against a Bonaventure, after that Bucks clip, you're going to come off the handoff, right? Um, yep. Into a ball screen. What, what do you see here? Uh, honestly, it was more so because I thought I was thinking the whole time because you know that type of action when I'm getting double teamed, it would be a pick and pop situation, you know. But I thought that I had the pick and pop dude in the game with me, but I to him, I knew I had to go get the ball back. And then it was right into a screen, you know. You see more a lot of this action in the NBA, so I knew once I came off the screen, it was a little bit, you know, thinking, letting him think that I'm going to throw the pocket pass. And then that little Hezzy just got him in the air because he went back to his, his defender, you know. And then just from there, you know, just made a play, hit him with the uh, Hezzy on the baseline, you know, just just made a tough finish. But I also had uh, uh, Jameer number zero on the corner for, for, for another read for sure. Yeah, no, I thought this was great. I mean, this is the type of NBA action that we're talking about, right? You know, yep. just like you said, you come off it and then, okay, maybe you thought you had the throwback, but they put two on the ball. So then you give it up and then sprint right into it. Into exactly. a ball screen. I mean, that's that's great. Uh, and then you read. That's kind of a weak hedge, right? So you just blow by. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, yeah, no, that's that's really good. And then you see that help defender. Give him a little head fake. Get mm -hmm. to the other side and use your length, right? No, most definitely. Yeah, that's that's going to be NBA style basketball. All right. So then, clip number two here. Um, Cura, is this from your first year? Yeah, is this from my freshman year? Yeah, so from your freshman year. All right. So you're going to rip baseline, right? You're going to reject. 
And I'm curious if anything you would have done maybe this last year with this clip or anything you would have done differently here as you attack? Uh, so I really thought I had the dude beat. I thought I could get that shot off, you mm -hmm. know. I beat my first defender. But honestly, my second read would have been number one, uh, uh, drifting to the corner. If I would have seen his black jersey in the corner, he'd have read for sure. But, uh, you know, he caught me on the block for sure. But I, I definitely, I, I, I thought I could get this layup off for sure. Yeah, and you almost did, and you end up, you know, getting a bucket out of it. I think your big, you know, puts it back. But you'll see from a lot of the best guards, even like circling, circling around, right? Like probing on the baseline. Um, some yep. guys will keep it, or just like you said, if one probably drifts to the corner even more, then you got an easy look, right? Yeah, and, and honestly, you know, from on, on a league aspect, you know, it's not that many defenders who's trying to contest that type of shot, you know. And I, and the way my passing ability is, I can see the whole floor, you know. It's it's just right now, players, you know aren't in the right spot right now, so I couldn't really make that pass. So I just, I, I thought I could make the layup, you know, but honestly, that would have been a dump off, a little drop off pass to the big, for sure. Yeah, a lot of options off of it. So then this next one, I'm curious too, all right? So you attack going baseline, right? What, what do you see here? Anything you would have done differently on this one? So you're going to ball screen, side pick and roll, you're going to reject it, which is a smart play. You get a piece yeah. of the paint. What do you see? So honestly, I knew it, I had a clear lane, but the way I floated the ball up, I gave him an easy chance to block it. I should have regular floated it. But I definitely beat the defender off the first step. You know, I just I just laid the ball up wrong. So, you know, and honest, honestly, you know, he, he he's a great athlete, but I could have easily, you know, euroed him or, or just passed out of that. So, you know, it was definitely a lot of options out of that for sure. To kind of wind down here, some defensive clips, right? Um, yep. So in this situation, what what's what's your goal? So my goal is to, to, to force him to the screen, mm -hmm. but I did a poor job, you know, let him rip me baseline. You know, I should have, I should have, I tried to jump it too early and try to jump the screen, you know, and I, and I allowed him to, to get that easy, you know, uh, left, left uh, hand drive to the lane. But uh, it, it was good. My, my defender was in help defense, you know, but I got to be more important on that for sure. So you guys are, it looks like you're a hard hedge team in this situation, right? Yeah, you can see that he up there already, so definitely a hard hedge. And honestly, I should have already just forced him there, honestly. It's just I try to jump it too, just, just trying to be too, you know, aggressive, just trying to jump the screen. Um, just to show the difference in the on-ball stuff, I like this clip, right? So first of all, okay, you guys are aggressive and pick and roll. What's your goal um, as a help side defender? So uh, what, what what I had to do on that help side defender, I had to make sure to big and slow down so I have the tag right there yep. but I also have to make sure and be ready for the chop actions uh you see the guy on the wing he's, he's trying to uh you know he's a shooter so I know if I put a hand up it'll, it'll throw him off so just me just being there with a hand up it, it threw him off and threw his timing off yeah this and is make this is great defense all around you know I mean you're in perfect position on the tag you're there early so he feels you and then you're also close out on the flight of the pass so you get yep. there high hand um, what, how would you describe the de type of defense that you guys played? Because, I mean, it was pretty aggressive. Yeah, <laughs> very aggressive. You know, for uh, how many minutes we played in college? Uh, 20 40 minutes. 40 minutes? Yep. 40 minutes, you know, real aggressive, honestly. So it's, you know, 94 feet, you, you trap and you're doing everything. So you definitely had to be in tip-top shape for sure. So, you know, everything is just aggressive. You know, we don't want nobody, you know, feel comfortable on the floor. So we, we try to play aggressive as, as we can. And then lastly here, this one I was just curious, like, in this press, what is what is your role here? So this is against West Virginia. Um, where yeah. are you supposed to be? So on this press right now, uh, I'm trying to read whether, you know, right now if somebody's flashing to the middle or not, you know? Yeah. Because we need a little diamond press a little bit, honestly. Uh -huh. But uh, it, it's going to turn into like a trap. So I got to, if, if the ball's on the uh, right-hand side, I got to come up and trap with uh, number two. So, but the ball got reversed back, so I had, to, I had to run back to, you know, try to find the next defender. But it was more so a lot of scramble mode, honestly. So the, it, should this be you stepping up and taking the ball or no? Yes, for sure. Or honestly, if... If number two, if he would have hustled back a little bit faster, yeah. he could have the ball. But honestly, it put me in a tough situation because a shooter was in the corner. If I would have took the ball, it would have been a pass to the corner. So I feel as though if number two would have hustled back a little bit faster, he could have took the ball and I could have took the corner and uh, they would have they been back in safe defense. Yeah, no question. And so you're kind of put in that tough position right there to, to decide. But um, Yeah, and then it was big in the tough decision of whether you know how to play that. So, you know. Yeah. Um, but again, I think you have the, the length to really be disruptive off the ball as well. So, all right, high ball screen on this one, hard hedge, they split it, and you're just reading his eyes? 
Yeah, I'm trying to read. Uh, yeah, I'm basically just reading off the, the screen how to how to do his plan. I know the dude is not a threat from out there. You know, he doesn't shoot them shots. So I try to be in the gap a little bit. It's just trying to give him a little stunt and then recover back. And then you know I was there on 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 uh on his side and it made him uh, pass the ball back because he couldn't. He knew I was there. Yeah, no, I think, I mean, he tries to hit you with the no look, too, but you still, it seems like, really are reading his eyes and have a good feel for what he's going to do, right? Exactly, yep. And so that's that type of defensive instincts that you have, and so the shot-making ability, uh, the range, the floater game, uh, the handle playing at different speeds, and then, you know, yeah. having that type of length, too, I mean... I forgot this was a steal in this play. Yeah, it, he, he split the screen, but I knew... Where he wanted to throw the ball at because he seen me, so I knew once I like just faked like I was going in a little bit, I knew that would get him, you know, because he he he's not a scoring threat. He wants he's a pass first guard, and I know my personnel, so I knew he wants to pass that. So he either had an option in the corner, but I know I was more so leaning towards him. I knew he wanted to make that read, so I definitely jumped that pass. Yeah, really impressive, you know, instincts there. And so I think if you look at your full game, right, um, y your style of play, I mean, kind of fits the modern NBA when you talk about pass, dribble, shoot guards who can fill it up from deep, score it at all three levels. Um, you know, where do you think that that you fit into this draft, right? Because there's a lot of successful guards from all over. There's guys coming from all over the world, right? Where do you yep. think you should be kind of – how do you how do you think you should be viewed amongst the rest of the crop in this draft? Uh, honestly, I feel as though I'm very unique. Uh, I feel as though, you know, my range, I had the, the best range in the draft. You know, I feel as though I'm the best shooter in the draft. I feel as though I'm a top two point guard in the draft. So I feel as though, you know, I shouldn't even, you know, I don't get too caught up and worried about it. You know, I just try to, you know, stay humble, you know, and just just, just grind every day, you know, because the work will show for sure. So uh, honestly, it's really hard to answer that question. But I, but I know my strengths. I know my weaknesses. I know what I got to work on, you know, to get better each and every day. So I'm willing to do that too, for sure. Yeah, well, Bones, I mean, you have a, a pretty inspiring story just given, you know, where you come from, not a lot of hoopers coming out of Delaware, and, and then, yep. you know, some obstacles in your life, and then a little bit overlooked, and then now, you know, Conference Player of the Year, projected draft pick, um, you know, a guy who's got a bright future, obviously, so I think, I think you're an inspiration for a lot of like, young kids a, as well, so I uh, appreciate you taking the time, man. Yeah, I really appreciate you for taking your time out your day, too, as well. Thank you. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.